In this video, we'll be learning about the statement of cash flows with a focus on the three main sections. We'll be learning how to prepare the statement of cash flows, completing the three main sections, which are operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And we'll have a look at the reconciliation at the end, where we compare the cash and cash equivalents at the start of the financial year to those at the end of the financial year. Let's start by focusing on the three sections. Operating activities refers to the cash flow that results from the main trading activities of the business, typically making or buying in goods and then selling goods or services to customers. Investing activities refers to the cash flow that results from buying or selling non-current assets and making other investments, such as buying shares in other companies. And financing activities refers to the cash flows that result from issuing new shares, paying dividends and taking out or repaying long term loans. It's useful to have this overview of the three sections because it will help you to remember what items to include in each section when you're preparing the statement of cash flows. Let's have a look at the sections one at a time. We'll start with section one, operating activities. This section calculates the amount of cash that the company is generating from its ordinary trading activities. This figure is really important because it indicates whether the business is sustainable and is likely to be able to continue trading in the future, or whether it's at risk from a cash flow point of view and therefore is more likely to fail. There are quite a lot of items that are included in this section so it's important to spend some time learning the format, and that's what we're going to focus on now. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that I've prepared the format for the section one of the statement of cash flows. On the right-hand side are two columns for the figures. I've represented these with the letter X. The letter X represents that that amount will be added, and where the X is shown in brackets, that indicates that the amount will be deducted when the subtotal and total are calculated. If we start the statement of cash flows with a figure for profit from operating activities, which comes directly from the income statement. Then we include the adjustments. The first one is depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. So to reconcile profit to cash flow, the depreciation charge for the year must be added back to the profit figure. This depreciation figure is the one that's shown in the income statement. Similarly, a loss on disposal must be added back and a profit on disposal is deducted. Have a look at how I've shown this. The loss on disposal is added and then the profit, where the word profit has a bracket around it, is deducted. This format is similar for the items below. Next, we have items for inventory, trade receivables and trade payables. These three items all represent cash flows that are not shown in the profit figure that we started with. And these are going to be added or deducted, as I've indicated here. Notice that it's the change in the level of inventory, trade receivables and trade payables from the beginning to the end of the financial year that is shown here. I'll show you this with an example in a few minutes. For inventory and trade receivables, a decrease is added or an increase is deducted. Notice that it's the other way round for trade payables, where an increase is added and a decrease is deducted. Next, we have dividends received. These are not an operating activity, and so they are deducted from the profit figure. Next, we calculate a subtotal. This is done from the figures that are above this subtotal, shown in the diagram here with this purple oval shape. Once calculated, the subtotal is labelled as cash flow from operating activities. Next, we include interest paid. This is deducted because it's a cash flow that is not included in the profit from operating activities figure that we started with. Similarly, for tax paid during the year. 
Notice that this is the tax paid figure and it's not the tax due on the year's profits, which would be the figure shown in the income statement. This is a very common mistake, so please note this carefully. The final figure in the section is calculated by adding or deducting the figures above it in the left hand column that I've indicated here with the orange bracket. This final figure in section one is labelled as net cash flow from operating activities. Let's have a look at an example. You've been provided with the following information and have been asked to prepare the first section of the statement of cash flows. Firstly, notice that the pound sign at the top of the columns is followed by three zeros. This indicates that all of the figures given are in thousands of pounds. So for example, profit for the year after tax isn't 584 pounds, but is 584,000 pounds. I would recommend that you continue with this format as you prepare your statement of cash flows, showing a pound sign with three zeros at the top of the column, and then just writing in the numbers as I've shown them here into the statement itself. This makes it easier to read for a user and helps to avoid confusion and errors when lots of zeros are included in the body of the statement. Notice for inventory trade receivables and trade payables, I've shown the figures for the start of the financial year and also for the end of the financial year. So for example, for inventory, the inventory level at the start of the financial year was £40,000, changing to £48,000 at the end of the financial year. Therefore, there is an increase in inventory of £8,000. Next, have a look at the profit figure that's been given. Notice that this is profit for the year after tax. Remember that the statement requires us to start with profit from operating activities. Because that's not in the information that's been provided, we'll have to calculate this. It's really important to notice in the information in the question which profit figure you've been given, because it is quite common that you will need to do a calculation in order to be able to start your statement. Let's have a look at this now. Let's start with an extract from the final part of the income statement. Can you remember back to think about what an income statement for a limited company looks like? After you've calculated gross profit, added other income and deducted your expenses, you end up with the profit from operating activities, as I've indicated with the orange arrow. The income statement then continues, continues by deducting finance costs to give profit for the year before tax. It then deducts the tax charge for the year to finally end up with the profit for the year after tax figure. In this question, this is the figure that we've been given. So in effect, what we need to do is to work backwards in order to calculate the profit from operating activities figure. The best way to do this is as follows. The income statement extract can be converted into a formula as follows. The profit from operating activities minus the finance costs minus the tax due on the year's profit is equal to the profit for the year after tax. We can now rearrange this formula to give profit from operating activities is equal to profit for the year after tax plus the finance costs plus the tax due. I've simply moved the finance costs and the tax due to the other side of the equal sign. We can now use this little formula to calculate the profit from operating activities from the information in the question that we were given. So let's make a start now preparing our statement of cash flows. Remember that we're putting the pound sign and three zeros at the top of the columns so that then we don't need to include them in the body of the statement itself. The first figure to include is the profit from operating activities figure. And this has been calculated as we just discussed. We start with the profit for the year after tax. We add to that the interest paid and then add the tax due on the year's profits, giving us a figure of 840. Of course, that really means 840,000 pounds. But for simplicity here, I'm going to refer to it as 840. And I'm going to continue doing that as we work our way through the rest of the statement. 
Next, we include depreciation. This is 240 in this case, and this is added back. Next, we have a profit on disposal of non-current assets. Remember that a profit on disposal is deducted, and that's why I've shown the 15 in brackets, and I will remember to put that in as a minus in my calculator when we calculate the subtotal. Next, we have the change in inventory. In this case, there is an increase in, in, uh, in inventory of £8,000, and so that's shown as a minus figure. We also, here, for trade receivables, we have a decrease from 116 down to 102. And so that decrease is shown as a positive figure. Next, we have the trade payables. These have increased from 60 to 84. And so here, an increase in trade payables is shown as a positive figure. Next, we have dividends received, which we deduct, and show, so I've shown that as minus 10. Next, we calculate our subtotal from all of the figures above it, adding and deducting as required. This gives us a figure for cash flow from operating activities of 1,085. Next, we include the interest paid. We deduct the 56, and so that's shown in brackets. The tax paid during the year is 216, also shown in brackets. Finally, we're going to calculate the net cash flow from operating activities from the three figures above it, shown here with the red bracket. This gives us a final figure for this section of 813, and that completes section 1. I hope you're enjoying this video. Topic videos like this one that cover the entire AQA A-level syllabus are available to subscribers on our website. Also available are worksheets with detailed explanations and answers, online multiple choice quizzes that give you immediate feedback and a score, and a whole host of revision resources, including past paper style papers that have been written specially for the website. Details of subscription options are available on the website. Let's move on now to section 2, Investing Activities. This section shows the outflows and inflows of cash associated with investments. Outflows typically refers to purchases of non-current assets, where there is an outflow of money to buy the asset. And inflows tends to refer to sales proceeds from the sale of non-current assets, interest received, and dividends received. In other words, these are flows of money into the company. This section is fairly straightforward. We have the inflows listed, and those are all shown as positive figures because we add them together. And then the outflows are listed. These are shown with a bracket around them because we will deduct them when the subtotal is calculated. Couple of things to notice. With the sales proceeds from the sale of non-current assets, Please be very careful here to show the correct figure. The figure that is correct is the amount received when the non-current asset is sold. In other words, it's sales proceeds. It's not the net book value or the profit or loss on disposal associated with that asset. The total at the end of the section is calculated by adding and deducting the four figures in the left column and is labelled as net cash flow from investing activities. Next, we have section three, financing activities. This section shows the outflows and inflows of cash associated with how the company is financed. Inflows are money received from selling shares and money borrowed in the form of loans. Outflows are repayment of shares and loans and dividends paid. This is what the format of the financing activities section looks like. As before, it's divided into inflows and outflows. The inflows are the proceeds from share issue and receipts from bank loans, which are both added. And then the outflows, notice here, all shown with an X with a bracket around them, are all deducted. So this is the repayment of shares, repayment of loans and dividends paid. A subtotal is calculated as before by adding and deducting the items. And then this subtotal is labelled as net cash flow from financing activities. 
The final section is the reconciliation. So the statement of cash flows is completed with a section that reconciles the cash and cash equivalence figures at the start and the end of the financial year. The first line in the reconciliation is the net increase or decrease, if it's a minus figure, in cash and cash equivalents. And this is a calculated figure. It's calculated by adding together the subtotals of sections 1, 2 and 3 that we've just been looking at. Next, we add the cash and cash equivalents at the start of the year. This figure is identified from last year's statement of financial position. This usually is the cash and bank figures added together, although it's possible that a question might include short-term investments here too. Finally, we calculate the cash and cash equivalents at the end of the financial year, and so this is a calculated figure from the two figures above it, adding or deducting as required. This figure should be the same, if the statement's been prepared correctly, as the total of the cash and bank and possibly short-term investments figures from this year's statement of financial position. This is really useful as a final check, and it will help you to see whether the statement that you have prepared is correct. Subscribers to our website have access to topics and which include all of the resources that you require for that particular topic, including a range of videos that cover all aspects of the topic, as well as worksheets with answers and multiple choice quizzes, which you can do online, which give you immediate feedback and a score. Check out our website www.studytheeasyway.com to learn more about subscription options and also to watch a range of freebie videos and have a look at other resources which we've made available to you completely free of charge before you make a decision whether to subscribe or not. You can also find us on social media. Our Instagram page is updated every week with free check your knowledge questions which provide detail answers and help you to check your knowledge as you go through the course. We're also on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been useful.